G'day everyone and welcome back to the Australian Reptile Park, one of our live feeds and today, very exciting for a reptile nut is because we're going to be talking about the coolest lizards on the planet, our monitor species. Now we really hope that you've been enjoying these educational videos, whether that's Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner or our live streams and we've got plenty more action coming out throughout the rest of the week and tomorrow I think we're getting out our big 60 kilo firm uh, reticulated python so make sure you check that out. But we hope you're enjoying those videos and we hope you have a great, happy, safe Easter. Now today though, we're talking about monitors. Now in Australia, we refer to our monitor species as goannas. So don't get too confused by those names. It's just a descriptive name, goanna, that we call our monitors or our varanid species. And really, Australia is the home of the goanna, our home of the monitor. There's over 70 species of monitor found throughout the world. And here in Australia, we have around 30 of them. Now they come in all different shapes and sizes, and I mean that, our largest monitor species, which Brandon is holding right now, is the Parenti. Now a Parenti will get over 10 kilos long and potentially two and a half meters long, sorry, weigh over two and a half, sorry, 10 and a half kilos, or get as long as two and a half meters. Now our smallest monitor species, which is found in Western Australia, only grows to around 20 centimeters long, which is the Dampier Peninsula monitor. Now here in this part of New South Wales that we are located we actually have lace monitors that are quite commonly found around the grounds of the park and very soon we'll be sending our lace monitors on a bit of an egg hunt themselves now monitors of the different reptile species are by far probably the most intelligent they've got excellent eyesight wonderful sense of hearing but it's their chemosensory skills that's the most advanced it's when they flick their tongue out what they do is they flick the tongue out just like a snake the tongue is forked and on the end of the tongue, they'll be able to pick up scent particles. Now, a lace monitor might be able to track prey or a dead animal uh, up to kilometers away. So they're able to, because they're carrion feeders, locate that prey using that forked tongue, picking up those scent particles, tracking it down, and then being able to eat it. So they're very advanced reptiles, in particular to work with them. You can notice that some of the goannas that we work with can recognize different keepers, uh, and they can even be trained. And we have trained our biggest monitor species that we have here at the reptile park, our Komodo dragons, which are target trained. Now for our Komodo dragons, we'll show them two different colors. Blue means we're going in for an encounter, a pat or a walk. When they see orange, they get very, very excited. About as excited as these lace monitors will get in a few moments when we feed them this food. Now at this time of the year, as the average daily temperature starts to decrease, so will the activity of our reptile species. Now, because reptiles are ectothermic animals, which means they can't regulate their internal body temperature the same way we can because we are mammals. When we are hot, we'll sweat to cool down. When we're cold, we will shiver to warm up our bodies. Reptiles are a little bit different. They are more reliant on outside heat sources like the sun to be able to warm their bodies. So as the daily temperatures start to decrease, the activity of the reptiles will decrease as well. The metabolic rate will slow down quite a bit and they'll cease feeding. Now for our lace monitors here at the park, they'll probably go anywhere between five, maybe seven months where they don't feed at all. So when it starts to warm up in around spring and those average daily temperatures start to get closer to 30 degrees, we will start feeding the lace monitors again. So this is really one of the last times that we will feed our lace monitors for about six months. Pretty easy animals to look after really, aren't they? Yeah. The thing with monitor species, they have really, really sharp teeth and you can see the claws that are holding onto Brando's hands right now. But they can have evolved to do very different things. Some monitor species like the Parenti are primarily terrestrial, so they live on the ground. Other species are semi-arboreal, which means they live in the trees and on the ground, like your lace monitors and then we have some species that are truly arboreal we have some that are semi-aquatic like the Merton's water monitor which has a paddle like tail perfectly adapted to swimming now what we're going to do is put a couple of eggs inside the enclosure and watch the monitors forage around and look for food now usually when they see food they get very very excited now sometimes what can happen People encounter these monitors, maybe in a national park. Lace monitors are a great example. And people try and feed these monitors. I just want to remind you never to do that. You shouldn't feed wild animals. The reason for that, lace monitors become very, very excited by food. They have extremely sharp teeth and you do not want a lace monitor to mistake your finger for a sausage. I promise you that. 
how bad is it being bitten by a monitor? It's shocking, isn't it? You never stop bleeding. So try not to feed lace monitors. If you do happen to see one in a national park, admire them from a distance. Well, let's get this camera in nice and close. Then we're gonna bring out another couple of monitors to have a look at, and we'll see if we can get a couple to feed. Now, we've just got a couple of little chicken eggs. Now, they're over the other side, but what you'll watch them do is follow their tongue. Look at that tongue. It's gonna to flick out every few seconds and then they're gonna grab the food. Now, lace monitors are primarily carrion feeders, which means they'll feed on dead animals. There we go. Sharp teeth, strong, powerful jaws, but you can see that tongue. It's gonna to continually flick. It's picking up the scent of where the egg is, even though it can see it as well. But they do rely on that tongue. And you can see the other lace monitors in the background uh, are starting to flick their tongue around, knowing that there's potentially food around. I might throw another egg right in there and we'll see if we can get another one to come over. He's actually found this egg that's cracked and I think he's gonna eat this one instead. But you can see that tongue going constantly, trying to find the food. Now he's got an egg that's cracked open. It's gonna be much easier for him to eat than saying that he's gone for the shell. There we go, got into the gooey bits. The other lace monitors are all staying at the back at the moment. But as I said before, these animals are primarily carrion feeders, particularly for your lace monitors. So they're feeding on animals that are already dead. Now you could think of something like a ring-tailed possum, maybe a brush-tailed possum. Uh, they are hit by a car, they're dead on the side of the road. It's the lace monitor that's gonna come along and eat that animal. Sometimes, things like kangaroos, of course, will die of natural causes as well. Again, it's the lace monitor that's gonna come past and clean up uh, that mess. Now, monitors are not just carnivorous. In Australia, majority of our species are, but they're also insectivores as well, insectivore species. But there's even in New Guinea, some frugivorous species like the graze monitor that primarily feeds on vegetation. So even their diet can change from, from species to species. Now, of course, the world's largest living monitor or goanna species is your Komodo dragon. Now, Komodo dragons get extremely large. Now, a really big lace monitor probably isn't gonna get past even a big male, 10, 12, maybe 13 kilograms. But uh, more eggs are gonna go in, I think, because this one's full. Oh, we're gonna bring a couple more over now. Here we go. So these are the ma oh, these are the males. You can see the males are here. They've got those big, big heads. And this is a much smaller female uh, coming underneath the boy. I'm gonna throw in a couple more eggs so they don't uh, get too excited by each other. Here we go. Here we go. We've got another big male coming over the back here. He's coming over now. I'll bring him over. We'll get him. Throw your hands around. But look how excited they get by food. Look at the movement. It really gets them going. When they see things moving around, that tongue starts flicking. They rely on their eyesight as well. They get very excited by movement. I've got another little female coming over to my side here. They really are a beautiful, beautiful lizard to look at. They've got to be one of the prettiest uh, Australian lizard species. There we go. You can get that little girl. That's your egg. They're trying to pinch each other's eggs at the moment. All right, lucky last egg. They're sharing an egg over here. You can see that if you can get in nice and close. Both trying to eat the same egg. But you can see how easy they swallow an egg. Look at this one, look at this male. Straight down the hatch, gone. And as I said, this will be one of the last feeds that these goannas have for anywhere between five to six months. Really cool to watch. And what is good about the way they're behaving right now they're actually quite relaxed. Uh, they're not trying to chase each other around. They know there's plenty of food to share between each other. Uh, and if you throw a really large carcass feed inside of here, they basically behave the same. Usually the males will come over and eat first, like we've seen before, and then the smaller females will come and follow. I think that's their Easter egg hunting done for the day, I think. Uh, so what we will do now is bring over a couple of other monitor species. Uh, Dylan, sorry. Dylan has a lace monitor again, and Brandon, did you want to grab the Spencer's monitor out as well? So we get up nice and close now and have a look at the features uh, of the goannas. Uh, obviously they've got that really long forked tongue, which you'll cease to get every few seconds. And as I said before, that's what they use as their primary sense. They use that flip forked tongue to pick up scent particles. Um, they're beautiful, beautiful animals. And so the lace monitor is found in Eastern Australia. Uh, and again, as I said before, a species that's very adept at climbing up trees. They uh, fly up a tree like in a flash. Usually when you see a lace monitor in the bush and you disturb it, that's the first thing they'll do is they'll run straight uh, up a tree. Now you're probably not going to see a Spencer's monitor do that. Spencer's monitors do their best work 
on the ground. They're a terrestrial species. Now they inhabit central Queensland and north in the Northern Territory, and they're found in a much more desolate region than you would find the lace monitors. In fact, where you find Spencer's monitors, times usually are pretty tough and food can be very, very scarce. So typically when you see one of these animals in the wild, if you're lucky to, uh, they never look in the same condition that we're looking at this particular animal. It's a very healthy, fit animal. The ones in the wild almost look like they haven't had a feed in six to 12 months, but they are such tough, resilient creatures. Now we're very, very lucky to have so many different monitor species uh, found here in Australia. There's no doubt about it. Look at that tongue and those beautiful eyes. Again, We've got some emus going through the back of the buck box there. Again, you can see the shark claws, perfectly adapted for digging, particularly if you live in a burrow or a burrow system. Very cool, aren't they? All right, guys, yeah. do we want to do some questions now? Yeah, we've got some questions for us. Yes, please. All right, we've got a few questions coming in. Um, some people want to know, do we have any other kinds of monitor lizards at the reptile park? Uh, we have a couple more. We've got Merton's water monitors, which is one of our favourites. I said before, they have a paddle-like tail, uh, so they're semi-aquatic. They get down in the water, they cruise around. We actually house our Merton's water monitors with some northern tropical turtle species, and they swim together. And if you throw prawns in, they, the turtles and the Merton's water monitors will swim to the bottom of the water and actually uh, forage for food, which is really cool to see that different in behaviour between a uh, semi-aquatic species versus maybe a semi-arboreal species like the lace monitor. Are there any venomous lace monitor, uh, sorry, monitor lizards? Yeah, so uh, a lot of work was done on the research for the Komodo dragon itself. And a lot of that work come back from the fact that if you've ever been bitten by a monitor or a goanna, like a lot of the keepers that work with these animals and have caught these animals out in the wild, when you're bitten by one, not only are you opened up by their very sharp teeth, but you just bleed profusely. And that sent a lot of researchers onto looking into why that happens. Why do you bleed so much? And that started with the Komodo dragon. So the Komodo dragon has venom glands that produces an anticoagulant. Well, basically it means it stopped, inhibits your body the ability to clot. So you've got a large open wound, open from really sharp teeth, an inability to clot. What's going to happen is you're going to bleed to death. So it's very advantageous for an animal like a Komodo dragon feeding on a goat or a water buffalo, uh, a large mammal species, to have them bleed to death, become weak, and then can easily predate on them later. And since then, that has encouraged scientists to look at animals like the lace monitor and the parenti as well. The true venomous lizards, the heloderms, are very closely related to your varanids, like we're talking about today. So your true venomous lizards, your gila monster, and your beaded lizard, uh, they are varanoids, just like the uh, the monitors that we're looking at today. Are there monitor lizards in countries besides Australia? Yep, yep, they've got large distribution throughout Asia and Africa as well, uh, and that is the majority of their radiation, so yes, found very commonly in other countries. Um, how big can lace monitors get? Yeah, so they're one of the biggest lace monitors I've ever seen. Uh, it was a wild caught animal that weighed around 17 and a half kilograms. I've heard of animals that can top around 23, 24 and sometimes even bigger. It's rare to find a wild animal in that kind of condition and usually those captive animals basically being fed far too, way too much food. Uh, but out in the wild, if you saw a uh, uh, if you saw a lace monitor that weighed around 15, 16 kilos, that's a very, very big lizard. How long can lace monitors live? Yeah, great question. So one of the oldest lace monitors that I know of was over 30 years old. We have uh, Artie over here, who's well into, or the lace monitor, who's well into uh, her 20s. So she's a fairly old lizard and she's going very, very well. So there's no reason why she won't live for another decade. But one of the oldest I've ever heard was a tick over 30 years old. Uh, you touched on this earlier, but what should you do if you see um, a monitor lizard in the wild? Uh, the best thing to do is, uh, if you're a photographer or an animal enthusiast, take a photo of it from a distance. Uh, <laughs> but if not, just leave it alone. Now, a lot of people think that with a lace monitor, they're going to attack you. Now, this particular lizard wants to eat something that's already dead. It's not going to chase around a almost 100 kilo human thinking that it can take you down, maybe like a Komodo dragon would take down a water buffalo. They are far more scared of you than you should ever be of them. What they're gonna do is try and climb up a tree or get away from you. So if you see a lace monitor and you are concerned, just walk in the other direction. Don't try and pick it up. These animals are very, very fast. They've got an extremely sharp teeth, so you do not want to try and touch a lace monitor. Definitely don't try and feed them. If you see them and they're walking calmly, just admire them from a nice safe distance. And if you are intimidated or threatened by them a little bit, just 
just walk in the other direction because they'll be very happy you decide to do that because to, to them, you're a potential threat. They don't want you going anywhere near them. Can all monitors swim? Can all, yes, the majority of monitors can swim. I've seen even the smaller monitor species go into small ponds and swim quite well. And they do it almost the same way a crocodile does. They tuck that back leg in and they start to swish around uh, that tail. And some of the monitor species, even Komodo dragons are very adept at swimming. All right, maybe one last question. Yep. What is the biggest monitor species in the world? Oh, that's a, my favorite question because we'll be talking about Komodo dragons later on this week. Uh, by far the Komodo dragon, but once upon a time, if you went back around 20,000 years in Australia, we did have an animal called, they used to call it Megalania, uh, or Varanus priscus is its name. It, it, it's more, it's better term that we'd use. Now, Varanus priscus would have been around six meters long and would have weighed well over a hundred kilograms. So substantially larger than the Komodo dragon that is endemic to the islands of Indonesia. So yes, once upon a time, we even had a bigger lizard living here in Australia. But the extent species, species found in the current times, is the Komodo dragon, which can get to around 100 kilos for a really big male, a little bit over three metres long. Big, beautiful lizards. We've got a couple at the park, and they're just the best reptiles to work with. All right, thanks for that, guys. We might wrap it up there. Um, everyone say goodbye. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. thanks for guys. watching. Catch you on the next episode. Love it. All right. See you later.